This is Twit. Bandwidth for Know How is brought to you by Cashfly. This episode of Know How is brought to you by DigitalOcean. Simple and fast cloud hosting built for developers. Deploy an SSD cloud server in 55 seconds. Try it today for free. Visit digitalocean.com and once you sign up, be sure to enter the promo code KNOWHOW in the billing section to get your $10 credit. And by Drobo, a family of safe and expandable yet simple to use storage arrays. Drobos are designed to protect your important data forever. Visit drobo.com slash twit and use the code twit100 to save $100 off a Drobo Mini, Drobo 4 Bay, or Drobo 5N. Today on Know How, essential gear for Android users. We're unboxing a Predator. And get the most out of your old DSLR. It's the Twitch show where we build, bend, break, and upgrade. I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burdett. And for the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to be taking you through some of the stuff we've been geeking out to so you can take it home and geek out on your own. That's right. And uh, we've got some gadgets. We geeky. do. Uh, we, we, uh, we've put Before You Buy on eternal hiatus. Also known as <laughs> it's it's gone on vacation. It's not retirement. It's on, it's a, it has yeah. been retired. And yeah. the idea was because we, we wanted to break out the reviews and the shows that actually should have the reviews, right? right. right. Well, we're going to start doing it on know-how. We're going to show you some of the gadgets and gizmos that we get in that we think our know-how crew would love. Hmm. And if that happens to be a gaming machine, who knows? Who knows? <laughs> who knows? We've actually got two today, but I want to start with a, a nibble. This is a, a nice nice little teeny tiny one. Uh, I actually wanted to include this in the roundup of gadgets and gizmos last year because it's only about $20, yeah. but it's this. This is the Kingston, uh, go to the overhead here. This is the Kingston uh, 64 gigabyte data traveler to Micro Duo 3.0. Now, a lot of you are going, USB drive, that's not sexy. There's nothing, in it. There's no, it's not cool at all. But check this out. It's actually two-sided. As you can see, I can pull back the cover here. And I have two connectors. One is what? a standard USB 3.0 connector, so I get decent data rates. We're talking about 70 megabytes per second write, uh, read 15 megabytes per second write. Not the fastest USB 3, but it's, it's pretty, pretty good for what it is. Uh -huh. And on the other side, it's micro USB, and that's micro USB OTG. That's on the go. Oh, I totally know what yeah, you can do with that. Yeah, exactly. That's awesome. So if you have an Android devo device that supports OTG, or actually any device that supports OTG, right. You can now plug this into your laptop, transfer files onto it, then plug it straight into your device and do the same. Ah, oh, that's perfect for trips and things like that. Oh, heck yeah. yeah. Do they have a uh, USB-C yet? Uh, they do. They have okay. one, but they don't have one that, has, that does the dual-headed operation. Dual, okay. So they, they do have a micro-C, but this one is specifically for people who you know, live in the Android world and want to use OTG. Let me show you how it works. If you go to my laptop here, uh, Alex, um, yeah, so I'm going to go ahead and plug this in, and it's going to look just like a regular USB drive. It's going to pop up in a second. I'm going to have access to this. So it looks, acts like a USB drive, but now I can open up one of my favorite shows off the network. This is Flight Test, and let's say I want to copy over building a uh, giant Star Wars Star Destroyer. <laughs> so it's going to copy just like it would if it were uh, a standard USB drive, which I right. like. And so, you know, and then not super blazing speeds. I'm, I'm getting, what, 20, 16 to 20 megabytes per second. Uh, still pretty decent for a yeah. USB device. But then I can pull it and uh, go ahead and go to the overhead. Uh, now I've got my OnePlus One, which is by no means is this an uh, incredible phone. In fact, you go to the side view. No, by no means is this an incredible phone, but it does support OTG. So I can turn it on. Oh, let's see. Let's... Uh, not show everyone my password. <laughs> uh, and then I plug this in, like so, and it mounts. And I can go to the file manager. Oh, that was from before. And let's look at the USB disk. And now the USB disk has the files that I just copied over. So for example. And can you just play straight off of it? Yes, I can. That is There awesome. we go. So this is actually a really good way both to expand the storage of your mobile device because you can have multiples of these. Right. And this actually does copy a whole lot faster than, than just using the device as a USB drive. So if you were to hook this up to a computer, you wouldn't get as 
quick transfer rates as you do just by dumping it onto this USB drive. Yeah, and can you back up to that drive too? Yes, so? you can. Yeah. So if you've got a, a version of Android that supports a decent file manager, this looks just like an, like an SD card. That's cool. So if you want to pull stuff off, you can just drop it straight onto this. Now there is another device that also gives you access to micro SD cards. Um, an OTG. So, you I know, mean, if you if you start building up your little ecosystem, right. you, you have control over pretty much all your storage via OTG. Well, I think that the thing that's also super impressive is that this is smaller than like a quarter. I mean, I wish we had yeah, one for I know, reference, right? but there, no, we have no money, Brian. Yeah, we, don't, we spent it all. That's on our, way over the know-how budget. Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna just <laughs> ease ease back there. Uh, I will say it really hates when I do this. <gasps> yeah, Android Android starts... Oh, it's, it's still it's playing, weird. actually. It's well, buffered a little bit. Oh, there we go. Yeah. And then the, it complains, please don't do that. Unmount it first. I'm like, no, I'm a Windows user. So Does I it please do see, you, see me suffer? <laughs> see me suffer. Uh, but go ahead and you know get a couple of these, you know, 20 bucks a pop, and yeah. um, it, not only is it a decent storage device, but I think the addition of OTG really does sort of make it a must-have in your kit. Yeah, no, that's, a, that's yeah. a cool little device there. Yeah. I like that. I'm wondering, I wonder if this will work on Windows mobile devices. Uh, hey, Alex, does Windows Mobile support OTG? Yeah, but I'm not sure about the storage part of that. Mm. Mm. Um, 10 might because it's <laughs> right. 10. Well, we'll have to give it a try. Sure hey, actually, hey, let's, let's see. Let's plug this into yours. Uh, USB-C. Uh, 6P. Oh, wait, so, when did you get this? Uh, actually, that's the one that Jason had. He's letting me oh, that's right, that's borrow right. it. Oh, <laughs> so sad. Okay, well, I, I, I've got a, a USB-C device coming in, and you can play with that. Okay, cool. All right, all right. So we're going to go and get to an unboxing later on, because we do want to show you the, the big thing that we would have normally had on before you buy, which yes. is a brand spanking new laptop. But before we get there, hey, Brian, uh, you know what I want to do? What's that? I want to take a look at something that could potentially bring breathe new life into my old DSLR. Oh, it's funny you should say that because I happen to have my old DSLR right here with me. Okay, so what is this? So this is a Canon T3i, also known as a 600D around the world. Um, I've had this, I think, I got this the first year I started working at Twit, so it's about two or three years old now. You can pick them up on eBay for around $300. Um, nothing terribly special about it. It does have like a little you can pull out the screen. So I use it for a lot of the videos that, that I do for this show and everything. And it's just got the kit lens that came with it. Uh, but Canon was, I don't know if I want to say lazy, but they didn't really release it with a lot of software, especially for someone who wants to do video or get a little bit more professional kind of results out of being able to tweak some of the options. So there's a, a really simple thing that you can do called Magic Lantern. You download it, put it on the SD card, and then it opens up all those options on your on your camera, and you don't have to like hack anything. It's just on the SD card. Oh, so so this is this is not like disassembling the camera or removing a memory card. This no, is no, no. literally something that lives on the little SD card that you put into it, and it, it it what it boots off of that. It boots off of that, and then then if you end up thinking like, oh, I don't really want to use this, or it's not helping me, you just take out the SD card and format it. Like, you well, it's not you, permanent. You have gotten me absolutely interested. You know what I would love? I would love if there was some sort of video that you could show me well, that Alex, guide me through the steps. Could you hit that magic button? Now, for this project, all you're going to need is a Canon DSLR. In my case, it's a T3i, also known as a 600D, but uh, a fully charged battery and a properly formatted SD card. Uh, this is what I'd like to call a soft mod called Magic Lantern, and it's a open source way of unlocking all the different features that you should have had available straight from Canon, but uh, didn't because I guess they just didn't want to work on the software, which is fine because uh, Magic Lantern works great for if you wanted a lot of options like for video tools or different options for taking pictures. A lot of the Canon DSLR cameras are supported. Before you begin, make sure to put your camera in manual mode, then go to the format option and do a low level format on the card. Then if you're like me and you haven't updated your firmware in a while, you might want to go over to Canon's website, download the stock firmware for your camera. Uh, it's as simple as downloading the file, the dragging it onto the SD card and then just popping it into your camera. Uh, go to the firmware update option. Through the magic of editing, I can speed up the updating process. It only took about three or four minutes to update. So in the case of the T3i, I'm going to download the stable 2.3 Magic Lantern version and drag over the 600D.fir and the ML folder 
and the auto exec bin. So what that's going to do is when you pop in the card into your DSLR, it'll boot up and install the custom firmware. So same as before, go to the firmware update selection on the camera, load the update, go back to the manual screen for just a moment, and then if it works properly, Magic Lantern will install from the SD card. You'll be presented with this uh, awesome little green screen saying success. Turn off your camera and take the SD card out again. Download the most current version of Magic Lantern, but before you drag and drop it over to your SD card, and don't format your SD card. Just delete the all the folders on your SD card. So that's including all the old files and the DCIM and the MIC. Just delete those off the card. Don't format the card. And then drag the uh, updated Magic Lantern ML folder and the autoexec.bin file. Next, when you turn on your camera, you'll be presented with what looks like a normal screen, but if you hit the info button and go through the display options, you will now have this display. Uh, as you can see, there's a lot of different information on the screen. In the top left, you have audio options, you have the camera temperature, the name, file name, the uh, actual frames per second, because uh, I'm in movie record mode right now, the size of uh, gigabytes that you have left on the card, um, a bunch of different options and if you press the display button uh, right behind the dial on the on your uh, T3i you will have options for setting the white balance so if you push the display button and then the set button you can adjust the white balance on the fly uh, super handy for you know moving the shots around and stuff like that uh, there's also options for adjusting the ISO uh, and if you hit the menu button, you'll just go back to the regular uh, Canon menu. But if you hit the trash can, you'll be presented with the Magic Lantern options with a bunch of different stuff in there. I'm going to be honest, I don't know a lot of them. And I'm just going to focus on the movie stuff that I'm, I'm interested in and know about for uh, this project. But uh, you can thumb through the different options. And there's a lot of different things that you can do with your camera now that are unlocked. So depending on what you want to do, photography or videography, uh, a lot of these options are super helpful to have. And the number one, uh, one I like to have is the over override audio setting. So I can see uh, the audio um, input at the top of the screen so I know if I'm getting audio when I'm recording. Something Canon should have uh, had from the beginning, but, you know, whatever. Another one that I really like is the magic zoom option. And you notice if you select it and you hit Q, it brings up more options. Uh, and you can set the button that it's set to... Uh, for to bring up that option and I have it set to the plus button so when I hit the plus button on the camera it brings up this magic zoom box in the bottom left hand corner and what this is really helpful for is focusing on things because sometimes it's it's hard to tell if you're focused on something you have also a couple of options for waveform or histogram also another one I like is zebras uh, so if you can set that that uh, if anything that's absolute white will show up as has like zebra hatch pattern on it and that's helpful if like things are overexposed uh, you can also do vignetting if you want to get that uh, Top Gear vignette kind of style for certain shots or something. And like I said, you can adjust the ISO on the fly. Down in the right-hand corner is also another histogram. Uh, another thing you can turn on is focus peak. If you you can see, there's it looks like little red dots on some of the things in the picture there. That's showing where the focus is. Now, armed with that information, you can set up your... Your old, can you can breathe some new life into your camera and have the options that you've always wanted, uh, depending on whether you're doing videography or photography with your uh, your Canon DSLR. That's Magic Lantern in a nutshell. That's wow. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of features that I, you I, get added. Okay, so but here's the thing: mm -hmm. I could see someone saying, "I don't want all those features because." I, I want a DSLR, but I still kind of like the whole idea of pointing and shooting. Right. That looks a little complicated. Who who do you say Magic Lantern's for? Um, Magic Lantern, I would say, is for someone... It's not for someone who's brand new to DSLRs. Like, say you bought one, and you've taken a few photos, and then you've had it for a few months, you've gotten really comfortable taking shots and stuff, and but you want a couple of extra... 
Information, like for, especially if you're doing video, because if you're trying to do video on the T3i, it doesn't show you the audio levels. Uh, so okay. you start recording, you right. don't know if there's audio being recorded or not. Um, so before I used to just like have a separate audio recorder just to be sure. Um, now I can like see the levels and stuff like that on there. And uh, as far as like battery life, I'm not 100% sure if that affects it very much. Uh, it is. It will like ruin your warranty if something. Okay. Yeah, like, so something. Ha yeah. Something so could go wrong. Put this on a camera that's out of warranty. Yeah. Exactly. Basically. And All it's. Right. Yeah. I mean, I have to reiterate. It's only for Canon cameras. There's only. Um, Alex, if you have my laptop, I have some of the supported cameras lined up. Uh, it's all of these Canon cameras, and the T4i, uh, I guess, is still kind of in beta, and maybe a couple of the others. So it's not like super official or anything, but it works well. Um, Does it work on the 70D? Of course, the 70D is supposed to be their more professional one, so it should have all of this stuff already built yeah. in, right? Yeah. I mean, so for me, like when I bought the T3i, I that was my first DSLR, like, and I've had it for you know years, and I've never, never messed with it until now, and I'm really happy though to have these extra features. Right. You know. And, and slow mo was mentioning it can be buggy, which is yeah. yeah anytime buggy. you're playing with custom firmware. Yeah, you have the potential for it to maybe not work exactly the way you want it. Right. I, I kind of compare it to loading up uh, a DDWRT or OpenWRT mm -hmm. on a router. It's the same hardware, and it technically does the same functions that the out-of-the-box firmware did. It just opens up more p potential for you to make a mistake. Yes, <laughs> yes. You, it, so yeah, that's the same yeah. same thing. Yeah, you wouldn't, if someone was brand new to routers, you probably wouldn't tell Don't them to install that. DDWRT right, right off the bat. Yeah. And if this is their first DSLR and they're, they're just learning how to take photographs, don't install Magic Lantern because no. they'll they'll, add, they'll turn on a feature that is now messing up all their their settings and they have no idea how to right. how to fix it. It's for someone who might be considering buying a whole nother camera because it has more features. Like uh, I know Russell pointed out that a lot of Sony cameras come with a, a lot of those features standard. It's like your camera is capable of doing it. The firmware right. just makes you allows you to do it. Fleek in the chat room says Magic Lantern is for those who want to nerf their DSLR. <laughs> Unnerf? No, yeah. do, do nerf. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> but, okay, this is interesting. I, I would really like to try this on, on Leo's new camera. He just got this Canon. Yeah, that's and this, really this nice This is a camera. really nice... Th um, hmm. I'm surprised he let you use that. Wow, the whole... Hmm. The, the lens, even. You yeah. know what? Uh, let's go ahead and uh, actually just take a break to thank our first sponsor <laughs> of the episode and... That would be DigitalOcean. Now, when you're not breaking DSLRs, what you're probably going to want to do is have a great presence on the internet. And if you're going to have a great presence on the internet, you need a provider who understands you, both as a developer, as a programmer, as just as a person who wants to get a presence on that wonderful, wonderful web. And if that's you, then you need DigitalOcean. Now, what is DigitalOcean? It's, it's a way for you to take any app, any service, anything that you need to virtualize, put it into a container that they call a droplet, and then scale it up and down. That's the beauty of the DigitalOcean system. Let's say I want to start by opening up my service for just a few hours, just, just for some friends to see if they're actually interested, see if the interface works, see if it's secure. And then with the move of a slider, I can distribute it across that city, across that state, across the country, across the world. It's really that simple. That's the, the power of DigitalOcean. That's the power of droplets. That's the power of virtualization. Now, DigitalOcean is the best way to get yourself out there. It's used by over 600,000 developers, including Twits, Randall Schwartz, Aaron Newcomb, and of course me. Uh, you get to deploy and configure your droplets via a streamlined control panel or a simple API, and you can choose your OS, be it Ubuntu, CentOS, Debian, Fedora, CoreOS, and FreeBSD. You can also do one-click install of popular packages like Drupal, Docker, or Node.js. The same setup that used to take you hours and hours and quite a bit of guesswork, you can now do with surety because DigitalOcean understands what you need. It's also scalable. I talked about this, the ability to move from a, a, a sample deployment to a worldwide deployment with just the move of a, of a couple of sliders. And for me, I think the biggest thing has to be the active community. Not only do they have affordable prices, not only do they have great machines with multi-core uh, and, and plenty of SSD space, but they also have a community that comes back to help people who are new to the service. That tells me that the people who use DigitalOcean love DigitalOcean. It's so easy to get started. You can deploy your SSD cloud server in as little as 55 seconds. Hey, this, this is something we really want you to try. 
They have incredibly affordable and straightforward pricing with servers starting at just $5 per month. There's also hourly pricing available starting at less than a penny per hour. But we're going to make it so that you can get started today and deploy your SSD cloud server for free. Yeah, that's right. What objections do you have now? Visit DigitalOcean.com, DigitalOcean.com, and create an account. Once you confirm your email and account information, go to the billing section and enter the promo code KNOWHOW for a free $10 credit. That's plenty to get started and explore what DigitalOcean can do for you. That's DigitalOcean.com. And once you sign up, enter the code KNOWHOW, K-N-O-W-H-O-W, in the billing section to get your $10 credit for free. Oh, and by the way, congratulations to DigitalOcean. They just launched their 10th millionth, millionth droplet. DigitalOcean, it's work done in the cloud, smarter. And we thank DigitalOcean for their support of know-how. Hey, Brian. You. Uh, I don't want to block, drop this camera, so why don't you uh, make Yeah, that. why don't you just, uh, I'll yeah, just, just set it away. back here. And uh, internet, if you could please not tell Leo about that, because he <laughs> might go to his office and look for that camera. That would be bad. Um, we wanted to show you a little something, something that we think the know-how crew would love. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, well, I was at CES this last week. Mm -hmm. I saw a lot of laptops. One of my favorite was the, uh, it was a gaming ultrabook. Was it the Razer? The Razer Blade. <sighs> that thing looks uh, beautiful. It is a beautiful machine, but it's an ultrabook. It's not a traditional desktop replacement gaming notebook. Right. Uh, it, it is an ultrabook that you just happen to be able to plug into an external video card. Right. What if I told you that I have under this table a beast of a machine that does nothing but give you crazy power? I'd say prove it. Let's see it. Uh, I will. Uh, thank you for asking that. This oh, <laughs> and it is actually pretty heavy. This is the Predator. It's the Acer Predator. It is a gaming designed laptop, and we're going to talk a little bit about it. Um, I, I haven't played with this at all. We just got this in. That was just delivered. So I thought we want to share it <laughs> with the know-how crew. Uh, now you know the idea behind a desktop replacement is this is not something that you carry everywhere. In fact, if you carry this everywhere, there's something wrong with you. Because this is almost right. a nine pound notebook. It's 10 pounds by the time you add in the adapter and all the What's accessories. What's the screen size on it? This is a 17.3 inch screen. Oh, here. Here, you... yeah, I'll hold yeah. that in. <laughs> <laughs> After you watching you drop the DSLR, Let's I don't not drop this. know yeah. if you should be holding this. So it's a 1920 by 1080. It's full HD. Some people will be wondering why they didn't go with, uh, with Ultra HD, with a 4K screen. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, what they found out was just most people, when they game, they're still gaming at 1080. Right. Well, on a 17 inch screen, how close would you have to sit to... Yeah. I mean, yeah, you could go for the bragging rights or you could just go for performance, and yeah. they went for performance. Okay, I'm okay Let's with that. Let's get this thing full. Oh. My gosh, even the Ooh. box is nice. This thing is beautiful. Mm. It's like got this. like a little transformer kind of logo <laughs> it on really it. It does. I feel like it's going to transform and try to kill us. <laughs> All right, so let's, that's what you want. For that's your that's what I, yeah, I, I want my laptop to try to kill me. Mm -hmm. oh, oh. Show us the side view there, Alex. Hmm. Hmm. Well, we, uh, actually, can we widen that? Because I didn't realize yeah, how, sure. how big this laptop actually was. Holy cow. Excuse me, Brian. Can you widen that for me? <laughs> this, this <laughs> On is, it. That's amazing. Okay. So, first of all, I have to say that is a lot of packaging. <laughs> I, that's, that's why I don't like unboxing. I'm not a big Jeez. fan of packaging. Uh, yeah, this is definitely, this is almost 8 pounds. I think it's 7.8 pounds, just notebook alone. The or no, eight, sorry, 8.7 pounds, just the notebook alone. Ooh, and then this is the adapter because all that power is going to need quite a little bit of electrical sauce. <coughs> oh, wow. Yeah, all right. Now, inside this, imagine this. There's, it's a core i7. It's a 6700HQ. It's quad core. So, it's a, this, so, again, this is a faster processor than I have currently in my desktop. Just, just keep <laughs> yeah, that in mind. Mine, mine, too. So there's, yeah, actually, I think most of the desktops here aren't as powerful as this notebook. Ooh. Ooh. Hey, look at that. Oh. That looks like a nice keyboard Bring there. Bring sexy. Yeah, okay, well, speaking of this keyboard, um, one of the things I, I, I gushed over at CES about the, the, uh, the Razer um, Edge Stealth mm -hmm. was the fact that the, the keyboards are individually assignable. So I could, I could have certain lights, certain colors, depending on what, I, what games I play. This yeah. actually does this too. So nice. I, I've got lighting zones. They, they call it Predator Sense which allows it to switch depending on the games that you're using. So if you're playing, it'll actually light up just the keys that are applicable to that game. Right, they've got the gaming keys highlighted here, the right. directional arrows, WASD. By, by the way, when I say full keyboard, I really, this is not like full faux keyboard. This no. actually, this feels really good. Oh, that's actually a nice bounce to it. Hmm. I, I, I'm always looking for keyboards with a nice throw. I don't, yeah. I don't, I want, I don't want the mushy feel. 
No, yeah, yeah, I like this. Let's let's go stat. Let's go stat crazy on this. Uh, 32 gigabytes of uh, DDR4 memory. 32. Expandable wow. to 64. There's actually four expansion slots in here. <sighs> um, it's got a 512 gigabyte. It's an enterprise class NVMe drive. Now, so a standard SATA drive yeah. will get you 500, 550 megabytes per second uh, transfer, right? Right. Five, 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 550 read, maybe 500 write if you've got a fast one, right? Mm -hmm. This will do 2.5 gigabytes per second. <laughs> uh, so bye bye load times. Yeah, yeah, no load times. Mm. And it also has, along with the uh, NVMe SSD, it's got a one terabyte 7200 RPM hard drive. That's pretty awesome. So you, yeah, you've got a place to like offload the stuff that's not so speed sensitive. I'm glad that they didn't cheap out and do like a 5400 RPM or something. Right, like, right. Why well, bother? yeah, I, I've seen I've seen gaming desktops or gaming laptops before that will do just like the the rotating hard drive, and it's like, well, okay, that's you've just defeated garbage. Yeah, garbage, total garbage. Uh, six six X Blu-ray player. Uh, oh, this is kind of cool. So they've loaded this thing up with ports. That's that's a go to the side. Can you see from the side here? Uh, so we've got uh, three USB 3.0, one of which does the uh, the charging. So even if it's off, it'll do the charging. Actually, I think that's on the other side. It also does one Thunderbolt, and it's USB-C Thunderbolt. So this is the one that's reversible. This is also the one that uh, Razer uses to connect to that external video card. So it's oh, crazy okay. fast transfer rate. So it's Thunderbolt, but it's... USB 3.1 spec and USB C, which means I've got the reversible connector. Ooh, yeah, it's perfect for LAN parties. It is. Display port, HDMI, of course, gigabit Ethernet, combo audio. Oh, this does something that I, I, I really want to test out. This is the networking geek side of me. Mm -hmm. uh, they've got this feature that they, they're calling, uh, what was that? Uh, they call it Double Shot, Killer Double Shot Pro. And what it will do, it, was actually, it will actually bond the Ethernet and the Wi Fi networking together. I, I mean, I, I'm not exactly what? sure that's going to happen. I'm not sure how that helps, but I, I want to see I like if it works. Idea. I kind of like yeah. the idea. <laughs> I'm assuming that you need a network that supports that, so I'm going to plug it into my network, see if I can get it running. Um, it also does, uh, it does this really cool thing where the, you can replace this module. I, I don't know if, oh, yeah, I can just unlink it. So unlock. You can pull out the blue ray module, and you can actually put in an additional cooler. So if your laptop starts <laughs> to get hot, you can pull this out, put in a cooler, and it will actually help with the cooling of the, of the system. The cooling on this looks insane. It even has like little warning arrows right. like you'd see on a stealth fighter right there. And then uh, it's hard to tell on the camera, but like underneath here, you could see like the heat piping. Right, stuff. yeah. So, yeah, so there's, it's all heat pipe, but they also do this thing, it's a dust protection. So if you've ever had a gaming notebook, you know they tend to accumulate uh, dust bunnies. Yeah, crazy. because they're sucking in so much air. Right. This actually has a filter to help that not happen. I, I'm, again, I'm going to test it out to see what goes on. Right. It's got an 8-cell, 6,000 milliamp hour battery. For this particular notebook, that's about, uh, they say 5.5 hours. I'm thinking like closer to five hours of like hardcore pushing it. Type gaming. I mean, wherever I'd be taking this, I'd probably have it plugged in anyway. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> The battery is an afterthought. Yeah. Uh, the other thing with this is it's it's got four speakers and two subwoofers. So yeah, I was looking at this is a subwoofer. <laughs> That's actually no, it actually so, is a subwoofer. I've never seen that. Yeah, so no, you will get some decent sound off of this. 12, uh, 12 watts of power, so it's not a huge amount, but it is a lot for for any kind of notebook. Um, and uh, yeah, I, I mean this is really nice. It's got an IPS screen, so you're going to get some really good viewing angles. Now here's the killer. This is the thing that actually makes it a gaming notebook. There's all of this is nice. Yeah. But the video card that drives this is actually an NVIDIA GTX 980, which is it, it's, awesome. Yeah, it's it's yeah, that's <laughs> high end. This that's a desk. So it's a desktop video part inside the laptop. Wait, that's, so it's not an M. It's not the no, M version. No, no. But it's a GTX 980 with four gigabytes of GDDR5 memory. <laughs> Yeah, that's usually <laughs> the kind of the crippling point of a gaming PC or laptop yeah. is that they it's like they drop oh. in the mobile version. Yeah, the mobile version of right. it. So it's a quad core PC, and I mean, first off, uh, I like this rubberized. I, I that is actually my favorite. I like yeah. the matte finish. I don't like glossy. It's not going to slide around. It's not going to slide around. You're not going to. And when I film this, because I'm going to do a full review on it, it means I'm not going to have to worry about the angles getting too crazy. Mm. Let's power this up. I, I, I bet it's going to be crazy. <laughs> so wow. yeah, that's like the predator targeting uh, system in in the movie. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exa that that little triangle. Oh, that's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> just realized that. <laughs> okay. It's okay. As long as you don't have a gun on you, it won't kill you. It's, it's not Chopper. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, now, um, there's a rub. <laughs> What's the rub? Oh, yeah. I think it's going to be the price. 
What's the price on it? Okay, hold on. Let me let's take a guess. Me and Alex can probably guess. Chat room. Judging, by Chat room. These specs. Judging from the specs, how much would you and don't check okay. the internet, that's cheap. That's cheating. Because if this was a full size desktop, desktop with that processor, that 32 gigabytes of RAM, 512 SSD. Yeah, as a desktop, that's easily a seventeen hundred to two thousand dollars. Uh, yeah, desktop. and not including a monitor. That, yeah, it doesn't include a monitor. I'm gonna say yeah. Thirty-two hundred, twenty-five hundred, four ninety-nine. Zephyr is always. I'm, good. I'm gonna say three grand. Three I'm grand. Say three grand. Okay, not what bad. Do you think, not bad. Alex. Yeah, about three grand. Three grand. Well, you gotta say three thousand and one. Three thousand dollars. <laughs> or or two thousand nine hundred ninety-nine. Twenty-five ninety-nine. Yeah, so it's actually it's a pretty aggressive, and that's actually one of the things I liked about Acer. They're always very aggressive with the price points. Uh, now I will say there's a 15 inch version of this that's almost exactly the same spec, uh, slightly less power for um, for the stereo system. It's a smaller screen. It's a 15 inch screen instead of a 17.3 inch screen. It runs an hour longer on battery because it's not powering such a big screen. Right. But that's only a hundred dollars less. So if you're gonna go with a gaming replacement, I'd go with the 17 inch version. Damn. Yeah. Mm. I know, right? <laughs> now um, the the funny the really funny thing about this is so I I really wanted this. To, to play with. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. My Acer rep, she, she goes, okay, so, but Padre, um, you, you we, are, we are going to need this one back, okay? <laughs> I'm like, how yeah. Long, she how goes, long do you no, have? no, I know, you always send stuff back, but I mean, like, sooner mm. than six months from now. I'm like, yeah. Than okay. the normal. normal. Yeah. After, because where's your policy? The third email? Third usually? email. Yeah. yeah. No, You're but gonna so, I, I'm going to have this for about two weeks. I, what I really want to do, because I'm, I'm going to do Homeworld on this, I want to see if it'll, it'll yeah. hold up. But I also want to see how this does with um, uh, Creative Suite. Specifically oh, okay. With, like with if Premiere you're editing Pro. stuff? Right, because this is a graph, uh, this is a desktop graphics part. I want to see if it's going to give me desktop performance with the CUDA plugin right. for Adobe Premiere. It should be able to use the graphics part and give me crazy rendering. In fact, hmm. right now, when I go on a job, when I go on a gig off-site, I carry a desktop with me because I need, I cannot do it on a laptop if it's a yep. huge project. Right. I might be able to do it with this. So one thing I'd be interested in, do you have any 4K monitors around too? Could I you do. plug this into it and just see how it runs? Oh yeah. I mean, I'm sure it would yeah. be fine. It's but... I'll do DisplayPort. I'll get yeah. the highest resolution off of this. I and mean, yeah, with that card, it will handle four, it'll handle multiple 4K monitors without a problem. Hmm. Uh, so yeah, I, I am looking forward to this. And listen to that. So. It's on, and you can hear it, but it's not its not annoying. <laughs> I can actually feel the air like pushing against my hand in the back of that's, it. That's another thing that they did, and actually when I spoke with the Acer rep, uh, I suggested this two years ago. I said that one of the issues I have with your gaming uh, laptops mm -hmm. is you end up putting one crazy fast spinning fan, which makes a high pitched whine. Right. I said, how about putting multiple larger fans that spin Slower more slowly? And RPMs. that's what they've done. So you've got three in the back that spin more slowly rather than one spinning really, really fast. Again, the I like that. The mouse pad feels nice too. Yeah, the keyboard, the mouse really feels responsive. nice. It isn't touchscreen, so if you're looking for a touchscreen, uh, yeah. there's something wrong with you because I'm okay this with that. At yeah. the, that price with, you know, the, ten, the 1080 doesn't bother me either. At that price with... Uh, and and yes, for you gaming enthusiasts, that that is a matte uh, screen. It's not, it's not a glossy, not glossy. screen. Uh, which again, I like. It, it doesn't give me blown out colors. It gives me something that's a bit more accurate, a bit more uh, closer to actually what it should look like. So yeah, that's the uh, that's the Acer Predator. That is a 17 inch. I, I think the official uh, model number is the G9-791-79Y3. They really got to work on those model numbers. <laughs> next week, next week, I will do a full rundown. So over the weekend, I will run it through its paces. <laughs> yeah, it's laughing. And the predator at us. will chase after us, uh, and but, uh, I'll, I'll show you. I'll show you exactly how it performs. Yeah, it, it's not. It's not ridiculously heavy, like, but it does definitely feel substantial. It feels like it. It should, you know, for. Um, I will say there will be that guy. There's always that guy who pulls this out in the Starbucks, <laughs> and he's just like on, browsing the web. He's just browsing the web. He's not even gaming. Don't be that guy. Okay, this is too much power for you to abuse it like that. Let's just hope that uh, the CIA doesn't have you pushing too many pencils, because you won't be able to lift it. <laughs> okay, folks. So uh, stay tuned. Next week, I'm going to give you the full rundown of the Predator from Acer before I have to send it back. And yes, I do have to send it back. <sighs> Does that mean I'm not going to get to play with it at all? Maybe like Can a day. I, maybe like a little. Home world session. Yeah, I'll, okay. I'll load it up. Cool. All right. Uh, now we want to get to your feedback. That's your questions, our answers, and a couple mm -hmm. of the projects that you've been playing with. But before we do that, you know what I want to do, Brian? Uh, thank our next sponsor, Drobo. I do. I want to thank Drobo. Now you know Drobo because Drobo, 
actually, they were one of the very first sponsors of, of Twit TV. Like when yeah. Leo Laporte started it up in the old cottage, they they were on. They were a sponsor. They were with us. They 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 understood the, the medium. I first heard of Drobo when I started working here. All right, and, and Drobo had a different way to storage. When everyone else was trying to do network attached or you know internal weird bays, they said, "No, how about this? Just really reliable USB. We'll, we'll give you an array." that allows you to, to set it up the way you need it to perform, that will be as redundant as you need it to be, that will always make sure that your data is there. That's what Drobo was, and that's what Drobo does now. Now, Drobo is all about mission-specific storage. What do you need, and how can they custom tailor their solution to you? Now, digital data is essential to our lives, and that's what Drobo understands. It is the safe, the simple, the expandable solution for all your storage needs. They offer a family of external storage arrays. Now, you can either add your own drives or you can order them preloaded with storage. Arrays like the 5N, it, which is perfect. It is a network-attached storage device. It could be a media server, a file server, or a backup solution. You just plug it into your switch or router and you're ready to go. They also have the Mini Drobo, which is what Leo uses, and the Drobo 5D. These ones are the ones that I am actually very excited about. The Mini is lightweight and portable. It's just over two pounds. Four drive base for up to eight terabytes of storage. The 5D is a desktop unit with space for five 3.5 inch drives and a maximum capacity of 64 terabytes. Both have optional MSAT and SSD acceleration bay. It's a cache module. Basically, you drop an SSD in there and it acts like you would expect a cache to, to act. If it guesses right, if it loads up the, the data that you access most often, you get SSD speeds rather than hard drive speeds. And for the price of a hard drive. Now, I, I have used Drobo over the, over the years because I believe in diversifying my storage. I don't want everything from one vendor. I don't want all my storage of one type. And what Drobo gives me is they give me the ability to say, hey, I just need blazing fast USB 3 storage on this desktop right now for a video project that I'm doing, which will actually transfer data faster than I can get off of my NAS. Well, that's what Drobo is good for. And folks, that's why we like having Drobo on know-how. Well, the reliable data received by your Drobo and not yet written to disk is protected if there's a sudden power loss. This is one of the big things about NAS is if you lose power in the middle of a write, you could lose that data forever, maybe even an entire volume. But Drobos have an internal eUSB device where data is copied to, so if there is a power failure, it's still there. It's non-volatile. It's also expandable. You can add or replace drives in your Drobo with ease. No tools are required. They have Beyond RAID, which lets you expand on the fly, and you can mix and match drives. No more of this, I need to buy five drives at a time to put into my array. You just buy them as you need extra storage. It's simple. Those colored lights tell you everything you need to know, and it's fast. Thunderbolt, USB 3, gigabit Ethernet, all those connections are available for you depending on what it is that you need. Now, we want you to give Drobo a try. Visit drobo.com slash twit to learn more and to check out their complete line of products. And when you use the code twit100, you'll save $100 off the purchase of a Drobo Mini, a Drobo 4Bay, or a Drobo 5N. That's drobo.com slash twit. Drobo.com slash twit. And use the code twit100. And we thank Drobo for their support of know-how. Oh, um, um, oh, I was just... Uh, uh, what, what you doing there, Brian? The Predator Send software? Pretty cool. It is, right? <laughs> no, there are some, uh, I normally ignore the press releases because I don't want to be jaded, but they have packed in some pretty cool things. That, there. yeah, most of the time the bloatware that comes with the, it's uh, not worth it. the laptop, but I like the uh, information that I can see. I know, right? Anyway. Okay, I'm it's getting distracted. Yep, we have feedback hey, or no, something? We have feedback. You know what okay. we'll do? <laughs> this is something we want to do on every Monday episode. Okay. So not so much on Thursday, because Thursday is really project-oriented. But we want to reach out to you, specifically to the people in our Google Plus group, and answer the questions you might have. So uh, what's the first one, Brian? All right, this one comes from Nico, and they ask, I recently bought a WD MyCloud 2 by NAS drive, and it came to the conclusion that I need to update my network cables and switches to get the most out of it. The modem slash router that I was provided by my carrier is gigabit supported while the internal cable is still Cat5. Will I have a serious boost in performance by changing the cable and switch? Also, what is the best tool to measure the transfer speeds on Windows? I'm looking for something like Blackmagic Utility on OS X. Kind, kind regards. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, let's take those those questions separately because okay. the, the performance measuring is actually something a bit more advanced and there's a lot of different options. Okay. <coughs> Sorry. I want to first talk about something that a lot of people ask, which is, do I need to replace the cabling inside my house? 
Yeah. Uh, will I get better by going with? I, I have five right now. Should I go five E? Should I go six? Six E? Right. Should I replace my patch panels? Go so, fiber. Exactly. Yeah. It, it, and and that's all good. So I, I want to encourage your techno lust. If you really want to update your physical plant, please do. Yeah. Um, I will say, if you want to do it in a thoughtful way, it's not as easy as saying, well, six is better than five, fiber is better than six, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. um, let's start with the cheapest, cheapest, cheapest stuff first. Okay. When you're asking me whether or not X will increase your speed, it depends on the condition of X. Right. Uh, and what you'll find is a lot of times when you have wiring that was installed not originally for networking or so far along ago that they didn't understand what networking required, you will get things like Category 5E cables that have been stapled to the wall. Oof, yeah, that would which be bad. Which might technically work, but that, that's really bad. That's, I mean, you, all you need is a little bit of a breach, and it will, it will still work, it will still connect, but you'll have enough crosstalk where it really reduces the amount of speed. So okay. look through your wiring. You know, that Category 5 cable may still work, if it's in good condition, if it hasn't been looped around. I mean, my, my favorite is, if you see any electrical tape, no, okay, you're done. I mean, someone <laughs> spice it back together thinking it was like a telephone cable. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, thanks. Not so much. Um, I will say, I have found that um, if you have 5E, you're pretty good to go. It's going to work with gigabit. I mean, again, unless it's been stapled or mangled so many times. Right. Yeah, you're probably losing a little bit of speed, but not, not a whole lot. And, and remember this. Today's network uses switches. So typically it will only affect that run. Back when we were still using repeaters, interference off of one segment could, could affect all, but it will typically stop at the switch. Okay. So you'll know that one segment is bad, all the others will work. So would you re recommend testing your cables first, first with something like that Fluke tool that you had? Yeah, I, so I have the Fluke tool, uh, but I mean, that's expensive. Right. Um, the easiest way to do it is there are a lot of free tools. Uh, go to Ixia, go to SolarWinds. They both offer free tools that you can download that will allow you to send a bunch of traffic and then see how fast it gets to you. And it will <laughs> also give you stats like how often did you have to resend because there was a communication problem. And what you'll find sometimes is if you have a short run, you may get a lot of throughput, but it may have had to retransmit 30% of the time. Hmm. There's probably something wrong with that, with that run. Okay. Uh, but yeah, it, it's not as simple a question as saying, if your wiring is 10 years old, you need to replace it. It's right. the, what's the condition of the wiring? Right. Uh, and unfortunately, there is a new one, which is sometimes <laughs> people installed wiring that wasn't rated for where it was installed. I've seen non-planum cable installed underneath houses, so it's been exposed to the elements for five years, and it looks like 40-year-old cable. Oof, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, I I'm sorry, folks, you're going to have to inspect. There, there is no blanket answer I can give you that says past a certain date you must replace, but beyond that, but before that you're okay. Okay, well say if you, you have Cat5 but it's in good condition. It's if it's in Cat5 and it's in good condition, you can probably get gigabit off of it. I mean, as long as there's, there's not like a, a 100 meter run, right. you, you're okay. Now what you don't want is you don't want Cat5 cable that goes from room to room to room to room to room. You need no. it all to come back to the same point. That's right. that, and if, it, if you don't have that, then yes, I would suggest that you rerun. Mm -hmm. Because the room to room to room to room, no. No, that would be bad. Yeah, it's bad. All right. Okay. Sorry, cool. Nico. All right, what else we got? Actually, this one's, this one's fun. Okay, this next one. So Andy Lee asks, so the Micro Adapter Pro Universal Backpack is the most popular backpack for mini drones, but at 100 bucks, it's too pricey for my wallet. My wife is a fan of the, the Wish app, the Wish app, and I noticed a backpack on it that looked identical to the Micro Raptor for $9. So I ordered it, and I had some crazy foam, another project easily found on Amazon. From what I can tell, the backpack is cut from the template as the Micro Raptor. Okay. So it's like an identical backpack, basically. Right, right, right. I wanted to make a hot wire cutter for cutting the foam, but I got lazy and just used a kitchen knife with a long blade. I also used some spray adhesive to combine the two pieces of foam together because one was not thick enough. Measure cut, trace, cut, test fit, trim, test, tri test fit, trim, etc. Andy, kudos to wow. you. And, and by the way, I love the fact that he has the exact same radios that we have. He has the Fly Sky, the T6, yes. and he also has the Tyrannus. Nice. So, yeah, I gotta like that, Father Sky. And if, this is, I love this. Actually, I, I, I've been wanting to make one of these custom bags for myself for right. a while. You know, fit exactly my, my transmitter because 
that's one of the most expensive pieces of gear I have. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and I, I, and that's very easily destroyed. All you have to do is rip off one of the sticks, and it's it's useless. I'm okay with breaking arms and props. I don't yeah. want to break my I, the, something no. on my transmitter. Exactly. You could bust my my drone up, and I'll fix it. You bust up my transmitter, and I'm grounded. Exactly. Uh, actually, go back to those pictures because Andy did an F phenomenal job, and this is without a hot wire cutter. So we're doing a hot wire cutting project. He just used. <laughs> Is someone <laughs> smiling at us. He just used a long kitchen knife, <laughs> and he did a, he did an excellent job. Now uh, he doesn't have it here, but the way that the the, the drone actually mounts, mm -hmm. so he's got the FPV system and the transmitter on the inside of the bag, right? The and the drone start. actually attaches to the straps on the outside of the bag. That makes sense. You can kind of see the little arms poking out back there. Exactly, and, and the whole idea is. Inside is the stuff that breaks, and outside is the stuff that I'm okay with if it breaks. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Cool. So, good job, Andy. Well done, and uh, please do more. Nice. One more. All right, last one. This comes from Bill Moore, and he says, I was watching the LED episode where Father Roberts set up the LEDs from Ready to Fly. I am using a Mac, and I can't seem to get the Arduino program to see the LED code. Uh, code library. Anyone know where this is on a Mac? Bill, thank you so very much for asking this. This is actually a question that we've gotten from a couple of people. We want to show you both ways. We want to show you how to do it on a PC, and then we want to show you how to do it on a Mac, because it is slightly different. So let me show you on a PC. If you go ahead and go to, uh, to my computer, Alex, uh, so that's input number, there we go. So I'm going to have to navigate to my program files directory and to Arduino. And in Arduino, there is a folder here. Let me increase the size of the font so you can actually see it. That is called Libraries. And in Libraries, all I have to do is drop the folder of the library I want to use. So for example, let's go ahead and uh, I'll open up the library that we use today, which was the ultrasonic library, uh, Know How 178. There we go. And it looks like this. And all I have to do is copy and paste into that library folder. And once I've done that, anytime I open up my Arduino IDE, mm -hmm. it will be able to, it will, it will read that library and it will allow me to use those functions as long as I do that include line uh, that you saw okay. in the last episode. Right. Okay. So that's the PC way. Mm -hmm. You know the Mac way. So the Mac way is not too difficult either. Um, you have to go to the Arduino donate, or not donate site, but they ask you to t contribute when you uh, download the software. You know, pick, pick OS X. Uh, I did just downloaded. But if you look at this screen, um, when you go to your download folder, you'll have the Arduino uh, icon and stuff here. I just dragged it onto my desktop to make it easier and kept everything together. but. You will download the library of your choice. This, in this case, it's the Fast LED, and just right. and that's the library that allows us to address the WS two eight one two and two eight one one lights. Exactly. So, and then when you're in the Arduino IDE, you go to Sketch, Include Library. You can either add a um, the zipped up version, the right? zipped version, or the unzipped ver version. I just left it zipped, and then I navigate to where that folder is, and you can just click on it choose and then it's well you read it, it you already exists because I did this earlier to make sure it worked um, but then once you do that if you go up to your uh, library it's down at the bottom so yeah. pretty straightforward yeah, exactly just so make sure to keep everything like in the same folder so you don't precisely lose track of it. precisely and, and remember you do it once once you've added a library to our to the Arduino IDE it's it's always going to be in there you may notice uh, the newer versions of sketch will actually tell you when there's a new version of that library that's available mm -hmm. um, I, I, I will say this I like to update but be careful about updating because sometimes it will break an old an old oh, function old things that uh, you had yeah. programmed yeah. yeah so just just be aware of that I'm always wary anytime I have to update something because if it breaks something I had there before <laughs> I, I'm not gonna be happy I guess it depends on like if there's anything in the update that you absolutely want to have precisely hmm. well Brian that was a lot of material I mean we did magic lantern yep we did an unboxing yeah. showed them some Android gear and then uh, we took them through some feedback you know I, I think that's I think we can call that a show. That's a complete show, I think so. Yeah, and uh, you know, perhaps ooh, perhaps Leo won't be too upset about 
All right. Uh, folks, I'm pretty sure you can if you want it. to find out anything about any of the segments that we did on today's show, what you need to do is you need to go to our show notes page. And Brian, where can they find our show notes page? Uh, Twit.tv slash KH, and you can subscribe and download the uh, video or audio of your choice. And also, you'll want to check out the show notes uh, for our previous episodes. Um, that's where they all live. So I don't know. Do we have a lot of uh, links from today that we're going to probably have in there? Uh, no, not too many. I but, guess Magic yeah, Lantern. Magic Lantern. If you want to find the links for Magic Lantern, they'll definitely be in there. But as you can see from uh, earlier last Thursday's show, definitely not recording this show on no. Thursday, no. Uh, you can find everything you need. But yeah. that's not the only place. No, no. What you need to do is you need to go to Google+, Plus, look for the know-how group. Now, I, I, we did make a change to this. Because we were getting spammed. We were getting a lot of those, the exclamation point accounts. Yes. It's spammers and porn girls and such. So I have made it into a, uh, you have to request to join. I will approve you. Don't worry about it. In fact, I try to approve within every eight hours or so. I was wondering if I should help out. Uh, yeah, anytime. So any, either of us, anytime you see someone there, just check the account really quickly. And as long as it's not a spam account, go ahead and approve. Cool. So yeah, that's, that's going to be part of it. But that is the best place to find out what we're doing, it, to, to see projects that we've already done. And most importantly, to see the projects that your other, your fellow know-it-alls know have done. Like the backpack project. Like the backpack project. That's awesome. If you have something that you're particularly proud of, if you have a question about a project that you're working on, post in there. And not only will you get answers from the know-it-alls, but maybe Maybe you'll make it onto the show. That's right. Yeah. Uh, but that's not it. Nope. There's one more place. You We're can on also the Twitters. Yeah, you can find us on the Twitters uh, for a behind the scenes kind of look to figure out if maybe Leo's camera can be fixed or not. <coughs> or not. I am at cranky underscore hippo. And I am at Padre SJ. And our director is at A N E L F three. That's right. He is. Can't uh, do it without him. He's uh, the, the happy, happy guy. Um, <laughs> Alex, happy. Yeah. Yeah. He's always happy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, folks, thank you very much for watching Know How. Don't forget, we do shows every Monday and Thursday. You can watch us here at live to twit.tv. You can also download. And don't forget to check out our YouTube channel because we're starting to post content that doesn't actually make it into the regular feed. So if you want to see some behind the scenes stuff, that's youtube.com slash know how. Mm -hmm. Until next time, I'm Father Robert Ballas here. And I'm Brian Burnett. And now that you know how, go do it. Go break someone else's camera.